the Minister is staying with us for our next item on <coughs> obesity. Christmas is coming and apparently we're all getting fat. So you might want to rethink the selection box binge. Irish households are expected to spend nearly 300 million euro on food and drink this Christmas. So we took a look at what the stats say about Ireland's obesity problem. <laughs> Recent government surveys suggest obesity is levelling out in Ireland, but nearly two out of every three adults and one in four Irish children are still either overweight or obese. The cost of obesity in Ireland is estimated to be 1.13 billion euro per annum. The World Health Organization predicts that Ireland will be the most obese country in Europe, with almost 90% of Irish adults becoming overweight or obese by 2030. Chronic conditions such as high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, stroke and diabetes are expected to rise by 40% in the Republic of Ireland over the next four years. Over 80% of food in Ireland is consumed in the home, so it's what we're putting into the supermarket trolley that matters. Well, there you go, there's some of the numbers. Gay God, can you say this is a massive crisis and that we need an Ebola type response? Absolutely. We, we now need a swine flu Ebola response to this. We're in trouble, Claire. We're in very big trouble. And it's not, I'm sure the Minister would totally agree with me on this, it's not a money issue. No matter how much money we are putting into the healthcare service, the model is no longer working for us. So what's wrong? Well, Ireland has a disease-based, illness-based medical model of healthcare, which is no longer serving us. The problem is that eight out of 10 people who attend their GP in Ireland do so due to a diet or a lifestyle related condition for which there are no pills. So we have an issue where people, this is, look, we had in the last 50 years, we have gone through a nutrition transition. Never in the history of mankind have we had so much food to eat. And what are we doing? We're eating ourselves into chronic illness and eating ourselves to death. And to quote James Riley, Minister of Radcar's previous uh, predecessor, James Riley stated the number one killer in Ireland is lifestyle. And he is absolutely right. So what needs to be done in your view? Well, we need, we, it's a system, systemic problem. We need a system change. We need to look at how we are educating our medical staff, our GPs coming out of college. Are they getting sufficient nutrition training? 300 of them come out of the Royal College of Surgeons every year. And I'm sure Minister Varadkar would testify to this. When you're in college yourself, very little nutrition training is covered. Is it not up to individuals, though, just not to eat so much rubbish? Well, uh, or are we going to rely uh, on the state to intervene? Well, I, I, I am not for condemning people. Fundamentally, we need people to self-care. We need people to make better health food choices. We need people to go into supermarkets and buy the healthier products. But the information is not out there. We live in a country where it, there's massive, massive confusion. Claire, I work in corporates where people ask me questions like, can I overdose on bananas? Can I eat bananas after two o'clock in the day? Do bananas make me fat? This is the kind of confusion. Look, we have no... So we're clueless. We're clueless. On what we're well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we, in a country where 65% of people are overweight, we have no national nutrition plan. We have no plan to tell people how to eat. We still have that food pyramid, though, don't we? Well, yes. <laughs> we have the food pyramid, precisely, Claire, where we're told to eat six portions of carbohydrates per day. Now, science has moved on a lot from that. If you look... I'm, we I still use it, though. Well, <laughs> no. you know, I know all GPs do, but it is out of date and it needs to be addressed. OK. So, I follow so Harvard just, School of Public yeah. Health and they make it very <laughs> simple. 50% of your plate needs to be fruit and vegetables. This can be made simple, but look... You, you look at a working mother in Ireland going home from work in the evening. She runs into a supermarket. She's looking to buy something for the dinner. She's bamboozled. Have you tried negotiating and navigating the food aisles and supermarkets? People don't know what a portion is. Is it 30 okay. grams? Is it oh. 60 grams? You need to be a nutritional scientist and you need a microfine glass 
to tell people okay, so what's Minister, in the name. Please label the food. We, tell people Minister, what's in we need, there. We need to help people because yeah. this is out of control. Well, well for, first of all, on, on a lighter note, you can actually overdose some bananas. <laughs> <There> you <laughs> <go>. <laughs> Who knew? If, if, if you had enough, had enough would cause hyperkalemia and you, you yes. could tend to have a cardiac arrest. Yes. But I imagine that's a, a, lot, of a lot of bananas. Um, uh, obesity, it is a major threat to personal health and public health. I wouldn't put it with swine flu and Ebola, which are no, infectious diseases. No, I'm saying diseases. we need a swine flu and Ebola um, response. I, I think where it costs your department a, a, a billion a year, is it? But, but, yeah, potentially. If, if you, but that's including the cost of diabetes and, uh, and other illnesses that are linked, that could be linked to, to, to or are linked and to in many obesity. cases are, aren't they? In many cases, yeah. yeah most uh, for type 2. But what I would compare it to is something like tobacco, where we've had the number of people smoking. It's that kind of actions you need. Alcohol as well. Um, physical in inactivity. The most recent survey, which is the Healthy Ireland survey, which is now going to be repeated every year, uh, indicates that obesity in Ireland has stabilised. Um, it, went, it doubled. Stabilised at what level? At a very high level. It, it doubled during the 90s, um, up to 2007, and has plateaued since then. But that still means about 60% of adults are overweight or, 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 overweight or obese, uh, a quarter of children, a quarter of pregnant women, and there's big risks with that, and then three quarters of older people. Um, I think personal responsibility is important, by the way. Um, people are responsible for their choices and their actions and parents are responsible for, for, for their children. So you wanted, what, you wanted a sugar tax, didn't you? But what we can do, one, one of the things that, that I'd like to see us do, what we can do though as a government, I think, is to help people make the right choices and to change the environment in which we operate. Uh, so just to give you some of the actions that are happening, I'm not going to give you a commentary or analysis, I'm going to give you actual actions that, actions that are happening. As part of the new GP care, the new cycle of care for kids under six, uh, children have their weight checked at least twice and that allows obesity to be identified early and we need to now put in the referral pathways to make sure it's make sure it's, it's dealt with. I'll have the alcohol bill in, in, in tomorrow hopefully uh, and alcohol is a major contributing factor to obesity. Uh, I've got approved from government to bring in calorie posting on menus so people know about the calories that they're consuming. Um, we're promoting breastfeeding more, that's linked to, lack of breastfeeding is linked to obesity. In schools, we've got the active schools flag. Wellness is now going to be a subject in the junior You can still put a takeaway up beside a school, can't you? And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, no yeah, law yeah, you can. That. And, and, and that's the kind of thing, kind of thing that we can uh, have a discussion about. But and, and you can still have vending machines selling all sorts of rubbish in schools? You can, yeah. yeah. Like, there, are lot, there are lots of other things that can be done, but you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to make, make people aware of some of the things that, that, that are being done. And can we and, come back to the sugar tax? Because I know that you wanted to have a sugar tax, but... You haven't done it. I still want to have it, um, but I want to have it on a particular basis. I'd be very worried if people thought that the sugar tax was some sort of panacea and that this was going to solve our problem, because that's totally wrong. If you look at the research and you look at the things that make the most difference, the thing that makes the most difference is reducing portion size, which is why we had that big campaign about the plates and, uh, and the portions you feed your children. Other things are really important, like reformula reformulation, working with industry or imposing on industry okay. rules to we'll reduce high fat sugar tax. You wanted yeah. to get it and you haven't got yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't got it. And, and I we're accepting the point that it's only a small part. If there's 30 measures, it's measure 26, perhaps. Um, we haven't got agreement on it. I haven't been able to convince my cabinet colleagues at this stage um, that is something that we need to do. I so believe it's something we need to do, but I only want to do it on this particular basis, by the way, and this is really important. I want to do it on the basis that any money that comes in from that is ring fence for public health. Is that the bit that there was a sticking point at cabinet that, that, level? That is a key sticking point, because as you know, the biggest, our biggest spend in Ireland is social welfare. We spend more on social welfare and health. That didn't used to be the case. If you went back 10, 15 years ago, so if ago, you had if, if you had a sugar tax it would be you would have got approval for it if Michael Noonan could have yeah. had that money in general taxation and, and it would have got, to would spend have, would have gone into the general pot and more of it would have gone on welfare and health and I think one thing we need to do over the next five years is to rebalance that, spend as much on health as we do on welfare, just like we used to. And if we do have uh, a sugar tax, I would like to have that ring fence for public health for some of the kind of measures that you've been talking about for education programmes, uh, and not just on obesity, for uh, programmes on tobacco, for example. Um, we've cut okay. cigarette smoking by half, but there are disadvantaged communities and young people in particular that we really need to get to. And okay. we need Let's, find out. Let's find out what some of our audience think, because lots of people are interested. Yes, raise your hand there in the white. Go ahead. Um, myself, just yeah. wanted to check in. I was the right person. Um, I agree with an awful lot of points that were made. I do agree with the sugar tax. I think we do need it. It's been proven in Mexico. 10% sugar tax and 6% uh, decrease in obesity rates. That is all fantastic. But where the money is going is the big issue. You say put it back into maybe the offset of illnesses created by obesity. It needs to go into education. This lady knows what she's talking about. She's talking complete sense. There's kids in school that can buy a cookie for 50 cent and a healthy wrap for two euro and 50 cent. That is an absolute disgrace to stay in age. Is that not parents though? Should parents not tell their children? They can not indeed, to have the... of course. But, but a child. Parents don't know. I have to say, I, I think 
think we need to stop condemning people here. I think ultimately what we but need... But I know my own children want to eat sweets and biscuits and everything all the time, but don't let them. You know, I, yeah, no, I agree with you, but, but it isn't even just down to eating biscuits and sweets and cakes all the time. Look, we live in an obesogenic environment. That's the fact of the matter. And we do need... I'd like to come back to the Minister on, on the, the smoking and the tobacco and, and the drinking. I think it's great, this new alcohol public health bill. But, Minister, eating is a universal phenomenon. We don't all need to drink, we don't all need to smoke, and we don't all need to, to, to take drugs. But there are over 7.5 billion of us on the planet. We need to eat every day. The best thing public health ever did was giving us clean water. This is a huge crisis. We need to give people good quality food. We need to educate them. This, it, it, okay. It's a journey, and we need behavioural change. Behavioural change is really difficult to achieve, right. but it is worth going for. And it is the only answer. We are go History is not going to be kind to us. We're going to be remembered as the people who ate themselves We have to lots death. of people who want to get in here now. Go, go ahead, uh, Keith. Microphone is, is with you there. Yeah, um, I'm just speaking... Uh, Keith Walsh is my name, and I've recently done a documentary on nutrition and, and diet and, and, and fitness and, and working out and stuff like that. But I, I'm talking as a father, uh, as a citizen, first of all, that thinks that it's, it's my responsibility if I'm physically well and I'm mentally well to look after myself, first of all, and then my children. So it's and not up to, to the government to, to look after It's my responsibility to look after those people. It's my responsibility not to be at the doctors if, I've done, if I'm not looking after myself. Okay? That's how I feel personally. I'm not telling people how to live their lives. That's just where I'm coming from. A sugar tax, I think that it's too... Um, it's just too obvious. It's too simplistic. It's, it's almost like box ticking. It's, it's like we're do this is what we're doing. It's kind of like a headline in a newspaper. You know, it, it, sort of, it, it sort of makes it seem like something has been done. It's, I think it would, be, it, it would be wrong because it would give people the sense that, well, if the, it's a sugar tax, okay, so, so, so less sugar. So I might have five spice bags this week instead. There's no sugar in them. It's, it's a mixed message. Like, the, it, it, education is the key. That's the problem. People okay, don't know so, what so, they're eating. All you, right, you, we've lots of raised hands here. The row behind you. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Cathy Sarah and Women on the Run. I've worked in fitness industry and nutrition for 23 years. Um, I'd like to ask the Minister, when are they going to actually go to the food industry and ask them, you know, are they going to make changes in the way they promote food? And also, you know, it could be a very simple thing in a supermarket where chains could actually have a food advisor on site that could take a, a woman or a guy who's coming in to do the family shop and say, look, don't go down that aisle. Come on over to this aisle and I'll show you a better okay, option so when, for your kids. So when are you going to take the food industry to task? Is that, is that your yeah. question? Minister? Yeah, well, well, we already have um, uh, a very serious engagement with them at the moment, and one of the things they are doing in fairness to them is reformulation, uh, which is reducing the fat, sugar, and salt content of some of their products. Um, I think they need to go a lot further, quite frankly, on that. And we're now drawing up the new code of practice for advertising and the way food is advertised and marketed. And if that doesn't work, we can go statutory on that as well and make laws around that, as we now intend to do with, with alcohol. But, you know, like, I, I think there are benefits in education and teaching people more about nutrition. That's why I'm really glad that wellness, for example, is now, okay. now going to be a subject uh, in the new junior cert. But people roughly do know already. Like, people aren't total fools. You think? And, yeah, and I, right. I, I, think, I, think, I think there has to be a degree of personal responsibility. We've consulted a paediatrician well. in the audience, Dr Sinead Murphy. Sinead, where, where are you sitting? Just mm -hmm. raise your hand there. You're in the front row. Yeah. Do people already know, do you think? Do you agree with the Minister? I think some people know some of what they need to know. Not everybody knows enough. And but I, you're, de you're dealing with obese two-year-olds, am I right? I'm dealing with obese two-year-olds, obese 12-year-olds, obese uh, all the way through childhood. And a lot of the families are not sufficiently educated. And I do, I, I agree that there is a role for education. I also agree that there's, this is multifaceted. So the sugar tax alone won't make a difference. Nor will education alone, nor will a clinic like we run, the Way to Go Clinic in Temple Street, make a difference. It's really got to be everybody coming together to make the difference but yes we see two year olds who weigh double what they should weigh and I, f I feel that something like a, a sugar tax especially on, on the sugar sweetened drinks would make an enormous difference to these children. Half of our children it, they growing up in Ireland um, survey which was conducted in 2009 interviewed uh, nine year olds and of those nine year olds interviewed 53% had consumed a carbonated uh, sugar sweetened drink in the 24 hours prior to being asked the question. Um, so that's okay, a bit of a, a, a lack of a education and it's culture. All right, right. that's Philip, what Philip is, is behind you there. Philip, just raise your hands so we can get the microphone to you. Philip Moyles? Yeah, here. Hello. 
Thanks, you just, just missed you there. That's OK. okay. Uh, Greystones, you fought yes. the food industry and won. Yes, we did. Uh, just very recently, uh, McDonald's tried to build a fast food uh, drive to outlet uh, in a site that was completely inappropriate. It was opposite three schools. Uh, the, the capacity of three schools would be uh, 1,850 students when it's fully open. Now, when I say close to three schools, when we measure the distance from the boundary of where the school was, the restaurant, it's 35 metres. And there's no law preventing them from doing that. That's perfectly legal to do that. Well, the, the planning guidelines, we were talking about planning earlier on. Again, the guidelines do reference uh, foods that are high in sugar, fat, fat and salt, they shouldn't be in the vicinity of schools, but it's all very vague, it's vicinity, it's not proximity. What we are now campaigning for, or want to follow on from the, the Greystones uh, issue, is we'd like to see uh, specifics put in, uh, 400 metres uh, between uh, schools and, and, a fast food and a fast food outlet. Yeah. Minister, can I ask you about that? I mean, is that something you've thought about? Or, or yeah, well, well I, I hadn't until the campaign happened in Greystones, and obviously I followed that in the media with, um, with a lot of interest, and well done to them for having achieved what they've achieved. Um, Whatever we do on any issue in health, I think the decisions should be evidence-based. Just because something is a good idea, it shouldn't be made law. So when it comes to something like the sugar tax or restrictions on where fast food outlets can be put or where a pub can be put, um, I want to see evidence uh, that's going to make a difference. And that's the key, I think, but Why do you think calorie decision. counts on menu is going to make a difference? Because uh, we have evidence. Uh, and we have evidence. We see, but we see that 80% of, of the food eaten is eaten in the home. So, sh so surely our focus should be on what we're buying and what we're bringing bring I, back to, to, to your home to eat. I think the point has been made and well made already. If we do three things or six things, it ain't going to work. Uh, what you need is to do 30 or 40 things okay. over a period of five or 10 years. And calorie posting, where it has been done, actually has incentivized food businesses to produce smaller portions, okay. which is really, really advantageous. And I, I know for me, when I, when I saw it in operation in, in, in Florida and other places, um, for the first time in my life, I realized it that does the, impact the, your the, choice. The, the Caesar salad has more calories in it than the hamburger, okay. which is All actually right. a very positive thing for me to discover. We've got to leave it there. Thank you both very much. We'll be back with our poll on trust and politics. Politicians. That's after this short break.